After several attempts to toss out the case, a famous face is heading to trial accused of manslaughter. That's what these jurors in New Mexico are going to have to decide. You know, did uh, Alec Baldwin act recklessly in regard to, you know, causing uh, the death of another person? And that and that's really what this trial uh, comes down to. Just last week, a New Mexico judge denied a request from actor Alec Baldwin's attorneys to dismiss the case on complaints that key evidence was damaged by the FBI during forensic testing. The judge's ruling was seemingly one of the last and final hurdles before prosecutors can bring the case to trial, with jury selection slated for next week. The actor slash producer will be tried for the 2021 fatal shooting of cinematographer Helena Hutchins. During a rehearsal for the Western film Rust, Baldwin pointed a revolver when the gun went off as a live round was fired, killing Hutchins and injuring the movie's director, Joel Souza, when a bullet lodged into his shoulder. Baldwin has maintained in interviews he did not pull the trigger and the gun malfunctioned. In previous interviews with ABC News and CNN, Baldwin insisted the gun was declared cold with no live ammunition by the movie's assistant director, Dave Halls. Baldwin has twice been charged in the fatal shooting, once in January of 2023, nearly two years after the shooting, when the Santa Fe District Attorney announced Baldwin and the film's armorer, Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, would be charged with involuntary manslaughter. However, two months after that, a special prosecutor assigned to the case, Andrea Reeb, resigned. About a month later, special prosecutors who replaced Reeb cited new facts in the case when they announced they would temporarily dismiss the manslaughter charge against Baldwin. But things would change in January of 2024 when prosecutors announced Baldwin would be charged with involuntary manslaughter after a grand jury indictment. Well, it's interesting, you know, that this case originally uh, was filed and then withdrawn and then it's been refiled. And uh, obviously there's just been a series uh, of hearings, you know, challenging whether or not this case can go forward because uh, the weapon uh, through testing had been uh, damaged and uh, the judge didn't go along with that argument and, and uh, has said, hey, we're moving forward. Criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor Matt Mangino explains prosecutors likely refiled the charges once they got their matters in order. Well, it is strange. There, there's no question about that. And, uh, you know, typically that's not what you uh, see happening, especially in a high profile case. Uh, you know, I, I think there was a bit of a rush uh, because of the uh, magnitude of this case and the people involved. I think there was a rush to, to file the charges because there was a lot of pressure uh, from the media and, and other others in the community. Uh, ultimately, the new prosecutor, you know, said, well, let's put the brakes on here a little bit. Let's make sure that we're dotting the I's and crossing the T's here and uh, withdrew the charges, which, you know, happens at times. It's not, uh, you know, extremely unusual. Uh, and then uh, once they felt that they were in a position to move forward, they refiled these charges and uh, have been able to consistently fend off uh, the defense's attacks to try to dismiss the case. So, uh, you know, in, in retrospect, maybe it was a good idea to take a pause, uh, sort of reset, and then move forward with, with all of your ducks in a row. Baldwin reportedly was offered a plea deal last October to plead to a misdemeanor and serve no jail time. The offer was reportedly made on October 5th of 2023, and Baldwin was given until October 27th to decide whether to accept it. However, prosecutors would ultimately withdraw the offer on October 17th, when the state informed Baldwin's lawyers the deal was off and they were going to proceed with the grand jury. According to prosecutors, they withdrew the offer after learning of Baldwin's ongoing conduct that will continue to cause harm to the victims and their family. Well, uh, you know, plea deals are made when there's a give and take on both sides. Um, you know, so, so you know, it's, it's an agreement like any other that, that benefits both sides. So maybe in exchange for a plea of guilty, you know, you get a, a more lenient sentence. Uh, but here, uh, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into it. How strong is the case? So the prosecution can bargain from from a, a a position of strength if they have a good case, okay? And and the defense, on the other hand, can bargain if they feel they have a good defense. 
And, and what we often find in, in cases that we see a lot in the media and trials that, that we've covered uh, over the years is that these aren't always the best cases uh, to, to be tried. I mean, it, it's either a weakness on the prosecution's part or weakness on the defense's part. So, you know, we're not seeing the typical case and in inve investigation when we, when we watch the trials that we do. So, you know, here, obviously the prosecution uh, feels that they're bargaining from a position of strength. Uh, they withdrew the plea because they were upset about um, uh, Baldwin's continued conduct. On the other hand, uh, I don't think that, that the Alec Baldwin was going to accept any plea deal short of having the charges dismissed against him. And, and he has the resources to go to trial. Uh, you know, that's the problem with a lot of uh, defendants who believe that they have a strong defense. They don't have the resources to go to trial, to hire the experts, to do all the things that you need to do uh, to defend yourself in a case like this. So, you know, you have you have someone who has the resources and isn't going to accept a plea, and you have prosecutors who believe, hey, we have a strong case and we're going to move forward. That's how you end up in a trial. The retracted offer similarly mirrored the offer given to Assistant Director Dave Halls, who handed Baldwin the Colt 45 prior to the shooting. Halls pleaded no contest to a charge of negligent use of a deadly weapon and was sentenced to six months of unsupervised probation. Uh, I'm not surprised. Again, you know, Alec Baldwin is the individual who had the gun in his hand. Uh, he says he didn't pull the trigger. The prosecution is going to say this gun could not be fired uh, based on their uh, analysis and testing without pulling the trigger. So, so there, there's, you know, a fundamental disagreement there. Um, you know, it, it, when the assistant director entered a plea, well, hey, he handed the gun, the gun, um, you know, was fired and ultimately caused somebody's death and wounded another person. You know, six months of unsupervised probation is not a very stiff penalty. OK, um, they're not going to make that same offer uh, to Alec Baldwin, especially if he's taking the position that he didn't pull the trigger and the prosecution's convinced that the gun wouldn't fire without pulling the trigger. Then there's the film's armorer, Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, who is currently serving her 18-month sentence in prison. She was sentenced to serve her full term behind bars after being convicted for involuntary manslaughter in the fatal shooting. First and foremost, my heart aches for the Hutchins family and friends and colleagues as well. And it has since the day this tragedy occurred. Helena has been and always will be an inspiration to me. I understand she was taken too soon, and I pray that you all find peace. I am beyond grateful that Joel survived that terrible day. My heart goes out to the film industry for the devastating pain that this tragedy caused and the old wounds that have been reopened. I am saddened by the way the media sensationalized our traumatic tragedy and portrayed me as a complete monster which has actually been the total opposite of what's been in my heart. Your Honor, when I took on Rust, I was young and I was naive, but I took my job as seriously as I knew how to. Despite not having proper time, resources, and staffing, when things got tough, I just did my best to handle it. Today, I humbly ask you to consider probation, a probation where I can cont contribute to society through community service, and I can continue my counseling, and I welcome any classes that you may deem necessary for me to attend. I give you my word now that I would strictly follow the rules and respect the parameters of that probation. I beg you, please don't give me more time. The jury has found me in part at fault for this god-awful tragedy, but that made me a monster. That makes me human. Thank you. But the judge in the case, who was the same judge overseeing Alec Baldwin's trial, didn't mince words towards the film's armorer before sentencing her to prison. For all the fanfare and pundits and finger pointing that has been going on for over two years, we were able 
to seat a jury of her peers, who confirmed they could listen to the evidence received in court and determine the facts and apply the law. They found Ms. Gutierrez guilty of involuntary manslaughter. What were some of the poignant facts that came out during the trial? In her police interview, she proudly owned her position as armorer. On October 21, 2021, chaos ended after the film crew walked off. Ms. Hutchins and others were trying to rig, if you will, how they were going to keep filming. And what was the defendant doing while waiting? She was loading Alec Baldwin's gun. Did she have enough time to load the weapon safely? Plenty. Did she load the weapon? Yes. With dummies in a live round. Did she check what she was loading? No. Why? Well, in her own words, most recently, in her jail calls, she didn't need to be shaking the dummies all the time. Did she check after that? No. And while you've heard her concerns about how she'll never work again as an armorer leading up to the trial, have her concerns changed? No. Here's what she says. This whole thing has been a character attack on her. Just recently in her allocution, I'm not a monster. And what did, oh, where was it done? They talk about how much of Han on the phone, they're talk she and another, are talking about how much of Hannah's life that, uh, they could take up and that this is messing up her modeling career. This is while she's incarcerated, waiting for a sentence. And what does she say about the death of Helena? Hannah is dismissive of the judge talking about someone dying as a result of her actions. Hannah says she's looking at 13 months, which is ridiculous over what happened. Hannah says that people have accidents and people die. It's an unfortunate part of life, but it doesn't mean she should be in jail. A conditional discharge is not appropriate. And the second option of leaving you in the detention center would be giving you a pass you do not deserve. I did not hear you take accountability in your allocution. You said you were sorry. You were sorry, but not you were sorry for what you did. You were sorry for it and hope they can find peace. It was your attorney that had to tell the court that you were remorseful. It's unclear for now what fate lies for Alec Baldwin during his trial, but could more have been done from Baldwin's team to prevent the trial from happening? Mangino says Baldwin's team likely just wanted the charges dismissed altogether. Well, I, I think that, uh, you know, Alec Baldwin uh, is probably in a position where you know, he has said, I didn't pull the trigger and I'm not responsible, uh, you know, for what happened here. Th this gun malfunctioned. I pulled the hammer back. And and so, you know, I'm not criminally uh, liable for anything in this case. And, and, and so I think anything short of the charges being dismissed against him, you know, would not satisfy uh, Alec Baldwin. And, and then again, uh, you know, in, in, in the age that we live in today, I don't, we don't know if it's good or bad to be charged with the crime if you're a celebrity and, and, and to go through a trial and, and all the notoriety that that brings, um, it's hard to figure out sometimes, you know, what's good and what's bad for, for your, uh, your, your sort of persona uh, as, as a star uh, in Hollywood. And since Baldwin maintains the gun malfunction, Mangino predicts it's possible the actor could take the stand in his own defense. Well, I, you know, I, I think it's it's going to be nearly impossible for the defense to present their defense without him testifying, because he has said that he didn't pull the trigger. The prosecution is going to have expert witnesses. They're going to have FBI uh, analysts who are going to come in and say this gun cannot be fired without pulling the trigger. If you're going to present it, you know, obviously Alec Baldwin doesn't have to say anything, he doesn't have to uh, defend himself in any way. The prosecution has to prove him guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Okay. But with that said, 
if they're going to present these experts, and maybe this is just going to be a trial about experts, they're going to present these experts that said he, he pulled the trigger and, and the defense is going to present ex experts that said he didn't. Then it's going to come down to credibility and believability of those witnesses. Um, but again, the, the factor that's going to be missing is Alec Baldwin saying, I didn't pull the trigger. And, and I don't know how that gets into the evidence without him taking the sand and saying that he didn't. As prosecutors and Baldwin's attorneys gear up for the upcoming trial, the fate of Alec Baldwin could come down to just a handful of jurors whose soon-to-be duty will be to make that decision. Well, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a high-profile case, and, you know, I, I think uh, the authorities in New Mexico, you know, want to make sure uh, that no one's above the law, um, a little different maybe than the United States Supreme Court thinks about some people. Uh, but, um, you know, he, he has to be accountable for his conduct. And we don't know if his conduct, you know, violated the law. We, we don't know if, if the prosecution can prove uh, that he's uh, responsible beyond a reasonable doubt, that he's criminally liable uh, for his conduct, that his conduct was reckless and caused somebody else's uh, death, you know, and that's what this trial is going to, to be about. And, and that's what these jurors in New Mexico are going to have to decide. You know, did uh, Alec Baldwin act recklessly in regard to, you know, causing uh, the death of another person? And that and that's really what this trial uh, comes down to. Alec Baldwin's trial is slated to last about two weeks. Jury selection is scheduled for July 9th. If he's found guilty of the charges, the actor slash producer faces 18 months in prison. Reporting for Law and Crime, I'm Elizabeth Milner.